I gotta, oops, I gotta shoot this video quick because it's gonna get really hot in here pretty fast. Um, so this is a two, this is a two, uh, uh, a double reason video. One is I wanted to kind of just do a real quick show off of the, of my sewing machines. Um, and, uh, also I wanted to test my iPhone as a viable use for shooting videos on. Um, my GoPro, which is awesome, it shoots great video, but, um, I found that using the GoPro is a little bit, um, the GoPro is a little cumbersome because I, I have to get the camera so close I can't really, um, I can't work around the GoPro. Uh, and the files are massive. Um, so I, I'm, I'm having trouble editing GoPro video. I, I do have a video I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit. Actually, I've got two videos. One that's not completely finished editing on my wood stuff. And um, I've got one on the pair of shorts that I'm wearing, which is on the GoPro um, it takes me way too long to edit video. I was hoping, or I'm hoping that I can use the iPhone, um, and get just as good a video as I do with the GoPro. So, uh, the, the short story is, um, in 1982, when I was a kid, I took sewing in seventh grade and was completely enamored by it. Um, I was also really into photography at the time. Uh, and you know, on film and what have you. So when I was 12 years old or yeah, 12 or 13 years old or whatever it was, I asked for a sewing machine for Christmas and damn if I didn't get it. Um, and honestly, you know, 30 plus years later, or actually almost 40 years later now, um, this is still one of my prized possessions. And this is a, uh, circa 1982 Kenmore ultra stitch six sewing machine. Um, and this machine that actually does work great. Uh, I actually, I had to take it all apart, uh, and clean it and get the petrified grease and oil out of it. Cause I never really used it a whole lot. Um, the irony of the, of all of my hobbies is once you buy the equipment, then you have to buy all the ancillary stuff that goes with it, you know, like cloth and fabric and patterns and, and notions and, and all these other things. And I never, I never... Um, I never had the ambition to do that stuff. So I never really made a whole lot with it. I hemmed some pants here and there and, and, um, would fix the occasional thing with it over the last, you know, you know, 40 years or so. Um, and just never, well, 38 years, whatever, 38 years, I think it is. Um, so when I decided that I wanted to make my own Molly gear, my own tactical gear, I, I whipped this thing out. I bought all the stuff from um, a company called Sailrite, and I started sewing. And I had a, a horrendous, I had horrendous trouble with it. And because this machine is not designed to sew that type of material, this this stuff actually, yeah. Let me see. Ooh, piece of it here. Uh, no, here we go. It, it's not really designed to sew like eight layers of um, canvas duck. Um, this is like crazy thick. It's just not designed to do that. It will, but it doesn't like it. Um, because every every tool has a purpose, uh, is in many ways purpose built. Uh, commercial machine or uh, consumer machines are designed to do everything if you know how to use them. Well, I'm kind of lazy and I'm kind of Veruca Salt. So I quickly grew bored with this machine, which is ironic because when I got this machine, um, this was, kind of, I don't want to say it wasn't top of the line, but it was pretty high up there because it does have, actually it only has, it's supposed to be Ultra Stitch 6. In reality, it's one, two, three, four, five, well, I guess it is six stitches, seven if you count the buttonholes, but I don't have the buttonhole thing. I lost that decades ago. So I can't actually sew buttonholes with this without, um, uh, well, no, actually I could probably sew buttonholes with it. I never even tried. Um, adjusting this machine, this machine is a mechanical machine and it's kind of infinitely adjustable, which is cool, but it's also, yeah. So I have, basically retired this machine 
for the time being because um, I fiddled with, I, I dropped it. Truth be told, I dropped it off this table and it hasn't been right since. I, I jammed something up. I broke something. I didn't break anything, but I jammed something up in the in here when it hit the ground it, it was not um it was not happy uh so i really need to sit down with this and fiddle with it a little bit to get it to to sew more evenly again using normal thread i was using really crazy thick heavy thread we're gonna get to that in a second so what was the next thing that i bought well i watch a guy on youtube his name's jason of all trades if you get a chance watch his videos they're really good he covers a lot of these old mechanical machines uh, and he makes manly stuff with his machines um which is what i was doing which is what i am doing i'm making manly stuff uh, my bowling shirts are still manly um so what was he he had mentioned something about um buying a serger because he wanted to make clothing well i didn't know what a serger was um so I went out and bought one. So let's go take a look at the serger real quick because this one is retired for the time being. So I went and bought a serger. I had no idea what a serger was when I bought it. I literally just went out and I bought a serger. So if you ever look at your clothes, um, this is what a serger sews. Um, it's it's called an overlock thread, and you use this you use this to seal the edges of clothing. If you look at your clothing, if you stop and you actually look at the way your clothing is sewn together, the vast majority of the stitches used, or the, the vast majority of clothing nowadays, is, is surged together instead of folded and hemmed multiple times. It's surged. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of upsides to surging things together. There's a lot of downsides to surging things together. Um, I basically just use this machine to surge the edges of my material after I sew them so they don't fray. Um, I also use it to sew liners in. Um, it might be difficult to see here, but this is a surged edge. This is a liner for a bag. Um, let me see if I get that. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to see. Um, but I surge the edges together for the liners on the bags. Um, and it works great, but you can also see that I actually did sew this together too. Um, I don't know if it'll show up on that, but it, it is. Well, that's what I do. Uh, and that's what I use it for. Um, this is a brother... Uh, 1634 DX. Um, the DX indicates that it was bought at Joanne Fabrics. Uh, this machine was only 250 bucks. Um, and once I got through the learning curve of how it works, um, and the way it works is really fascinating. Um, it, it, it literally weaves this chain together, um, kind of like a feed bag. Ooh. It weaves this chain of, of stitching together. I haven't mastered this machine by any stretch of the imagination. Um, basically, uh, someone who's really good with a serger can basically sew anything. Any they uh, anybody somebody that's good with a serger can sew anything with it, and not actually really need a sewing machine. Um, I highly recommend buying one. Um, and learning how to use it, neither of which of those things I've done. Um, I mean, I bought it, and I kind of know how to use it. The problem with serger, this serger, or sergers in general that I'm I'm coming to understand is uh, they're not very forgiving. Um, they uh, I've broken multiple needles on this thing. I have broken thread multiple different times. Uh, now I am using cheap overlock thread, which is probably part of the problem um it uses a ton of thread uh the thread for this comes on these great big three thousand yard or 
thousand yard spools uh, and you need it. Um, this machine also required a little fiddling. I had this to, to fix this. Um, um, this is actually taped into place because it was spinning when it was being um, used and what have you. It, 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 I didn't just jump into this thing and get it to work right away. <coughs> there was a girl I saw. So when I was looking to buy one of these machines, uh, the price is very wildly, just like sewing machines. Um, this was the least expensive machine that I could buy that would still do what I wanted it to do, which is um, surge or so uh, multiple layers of denim together. Um, there's a girl, I can't remember her name, I watched her video on sergers. It's a uh, black girl that she does a lot of um, repurposing of clothing. Um, so she cuts clothes apart and then makes new clothes out of the old clothes. And she took like eight layers of denim and ran it through this machine and it worked perfectly. Uh, she tried it with a baby lock. She tried it with a different, she tried it with like three other ones that were like higher quality or higher brand. And it, they jammed up. They didn't like it. They were they wouldn't trim. This thing has a cutter on it. So as you as you go through, this is purely for edge to edge sewing. So if you're taking a piece of material and you just want to sew it together like that, two raw edges, you and it just sews it right together. Um, these are all these little fiddles. All these are just different adjustments. I have found with the limited you know, like six months of fiddling with this thing. Not, don't fiddle too much because once you start fiddling too much, you have problems. Um, I had actually originally, originally, originally bought this because I wanted to finish the edges on patches. And I quickly came to find out that that's a lot harder than you think it is. And they make a, a special overlock, um, an overlock thread or overlocking machine specifically to, to do the edges of patches. Um, this will do it. It doesn't like to do it. I've actually had much better success with my Burnett, which I'm gonna get to next. So this is, like I said, this is the Brother um, Lock 1634DX. I got it at, at um, I got it at Joanne Fabrics. Uh, this also has a, you can do cuffs on this. It's got a, a thing in there. I actually have used that before. Oh, sorry. Now let's go to the next one over here. Now this is the this is the Mac Daddy right here. Now, this I purchased. Um, I purchased this machine to replace my Kenmore Ultra Stitch Six. Now, this is a Burnett B seventy nine. Uh, combination sewing and sewing machine and embroidery machine. So this machine, I don't, I'm not going to go drag the embroidery module out because I put it away. Um, I, I, I had to build a case. I built a case for it. I built a case for this. I built a case for the embroidery machine or the embroidery attachment. The embroidery attachments, this big thing that goes on here and it's got a X, Y axis. Um, I'm, I'm still getting I'm still getting the hang of it. I've used the embroidery um, a lot I've, or not a lot. I've, I've used the embroidery part a good bit and I'm still getting the hang of it. Um, there's an art to embroidery. You don't just put it in the machine and, and it makes beautiful embroidery. Um, you have to work at it. Now this is a computer controlled machine. Um, now it's a computer controlled machine but it still only has one drive motor. Now I found that out the hard way, um, recently because I, <laughs> I broke it. Um, the poor girls down at Hay Sewing Machine are, I, I are, I, I can't decide whether or not they're sick of looking at me or they're enamored by the fact that I could do all this stuff or I want to do all this stuff. Um, so what happened with the Burnett here is I was trying to sew uh, a buttonhole in a pair of shorts that I was making, which is my other video, and I actually show the machine breaking in that video. Um, I, I didn't break the machine. 
the, what had happened was, or what happens with this machine in particular with me, with what I was trying to do, is I overloaded the machine, period. I way overloaded the machine. Um, as a matter of fact, when I got this machine, I actually had to take it back to uh, Hayes and Stephanie, the, the owner there, was so kind and so patient with me. Um, the thread that I was using or I use on some of these projects, on the vast majority of my projects that are not clothing, is a real heavy V62 thread, which I get from Sailrite, which is like wire um, compared to regular sewing thread. So what I ended up having to do down, what we ended up having to do was actually get into, this is the bobbin case. This is the bobbin carrier, or the, this is the bobbin case on this machine, because this machine's bobbin is here. Um, we actually had to get in and fiddle, see the, the, this hole here, that's got a piece of Loctite in there to keep you from fiddling with it, and we actually had to fiddle with that to get it to sew right. Once, once I got that straightened out, the machine sews heavy material, it'll sew five or six or seven layers of um, like this wax canvas uh, perfectly. But I was still overloading this machine um, for that type of stuff. If I'm sewing, um, we'll say four or so this is Six. This is like eight to ten layers. It's just like eight layers of wax canvas, and then I'm putting, I'm putting webbing in it, right? So now I've got three layers of webbing plus the wax canvas. The machine just really, the machine just really doesn't like it, um, and. Years of being a mechanic, I, I, I quickly learned when I was a kid, you can only overtax something so long or so much before it finally just, it just gives up the ghost. It, it, it's, a, it's a piece of equipment that you need to respect and you need to learn how to use it. And you need to learn how, when to quit. And when I knock the machine out of time, I came to the realization that, hey, you know what, maybe, maybe you gotta, maybe you gotta take a break from that particular, um, aspect of trying to sew with this machine. This machine is phenomenal. I love it. It's got a zillion little stitches. I can, I can sew my name in the things with it. It does the embroidery. Pretty much it sewed everything I've asked it to sew with a, a few little hiccups here and there. And those hiccups were caused by me, not the machine. I cannot blame this machine for, for anything that I did. And the vast majority of the screw-ups that I've had with this machine were directly as a result of me um, overtaxing it for, overtaxing it. Um, but it does, it has thousands of different stitches and stitch patterns and designs and all kinds of stuff. Um, sewing with Cody and Pete, um, is another YouTube channel and he goes through every single one of the ways to make this machine work. Go visit his channel. Um, he is, uh, he's very, very nice to listen to. He's, he gives a very thorough explanation of how to make this machine work much better than the instructions I might add. Um, so if you're having trouble with the machine in any way, shape, or form, I say go go to them. Or you should have bought the machine. If you're buying a, a, a high quality sewing machine, you should buy that machine from a manufact uh, from a sewing machine store. Um, so that's my B79, and this is my workhorse. I actually use this machine the most out of all the machines that I have here. Well, actually, the serger gets a lot of use because I surge everything before I sew it together. But when I'm sewing stuff together, the vast majority of things that I sew together, I sew together with this machine. Now, 
let's get to the next one, which was an impulse purchase, um, which was an impulse purchase that I'm really happy that I made. Uh, I'm Veruca Salt when it comes to having the right stuff to do a job. Um, I have a full wood shop here. I have a full welding shop here. Um, I'm a bit of a tool junkie. If I need a tool, I will go buy it and I will learn how to use it to do just even one project. I, I should probably just sell all this stuff and get one third of my money back. But I like having the ability to, to build or make or shape absolutely anything. And I can, I can, I can do that. It's just me. Um, <laughs> I also have enough video equipment to shoot a, a, a high quality porno or a B movie. So the next one, I just got this machine. I got this, I just got this machine like three weeks ago or two weeks ago. Three, uh, I think it was three weeks ago because I went on vacation with my wife. This is a Sailrite um, model LZ1 or LS, LSZ1. It's right there on the thing here. I did an unboxing video of this, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that up first and then I'll, then I'll go over this machine. Uh, I'm not gonna go through how this machine works other than um, this thing is absolutely an awesome piece of equipment. If you're sewing bags, um, this machine is made, is this is a light industrial machine. Um, it is a, it's a, it's a walking foot machine. So the, the Burnett actually does have a built in walking foot, which is, which is phenomenal. But this machine is a real walking foot machine. This, this thing you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, the, the foot moves up and down, the paws move up and down. This machine is specifically built and designed to sew this stuff. As a matter of fact, it, it, it's kind of, it was kind of funny. Um, when I got this machine, this, this was the sew test that came with this machine. Um, this is one, two, three, four, five, six layers of upholstery vinyl. Um, I bought this machine so I can do auto upholstery or boat upholstery or make like to sew sunbrellas. Uh, this is sunbrella material, uh, which is the, and this is two layers of sunbrella. Now, the other thing is that this is V92 thread. Um, the machine came set up to sew V92, which is, um, this stuff is crazy thread. This thread will outlast um, the stuff you sew together with it. Um, this is the V62, which is, you can see in the video, I mean, you, I don't know how good the camera is going to show this, but you can see the, you can physically see the difference in this material, in this thread. Um, now, this machine has, for me, a, a real big learning curve. Um, and I also should add that I purchased the premium package with this machine, which uh, is, I like I said, I have an unboxing video, which I'm going to put up. Um, so I paid uh, about $500 more for this machine than it's advertised for on the site. So the, 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 uh, so I got a carrying case with it, which is much nicer than the ones that I made. Um, this, this, this is designed to be carried someplace. I went with the larger, um, I, I have the larger, uh, they call it the monster flywheel on this thing, which is incredible. Um, it will drive, it will drive a number 20 needle through this material like it's not even there. Um, now I have broken a few needles on this already, but that's because of, I'm, I am weird. I, I, I pushed it to the very limits of its ability and I snapped a needle doing something dumb. Um, I was trying to sew, I was trying to go like this. So I had like this amount of material and then I had this amount of material and I was trying to get it to walk over it. It did it. Um, but then when I backed it up, it snapped the needle, um, which that happens. The beef I have with this machine, I have two, I actually have two 
small beefs with this machine. One is um, it takes a good bit of time. It, it takes a lot of practice to get it to produce a really nice, clean, um, distinctive stitch. This machine really likes to be wide stitching, okay, like this. Okay, this is a six millimeter stitch. This is the biggest stitch that it makes. Um, and it requires a good bit of fiddling to get it to produce a perfect looking stitch. You, you're, you're playing with the, um, you have to, uh, do, there's a lot of tension adjustments that have to be made. I had to detune this machine to run because when it came through, it had this in it, this crazy thread. So I actually had to get in and adjust the bobbin tension. I had to adjust the, and I'm constantly fiddling with this upper tension. Uh, the other thing I, I really don't like about this machine, and I'm actually going to tag sail right in it, is I'm not crazy about the way this works. Um, the, this, if you, if you're not paying attention and you let this whack back, Oh, it just did it. So if you let this whack back, it changes your stitch length. So that's obviously that's my fault because I do that. I'm not paying attention and I, I let it whack itself back in there and it moves. So the reason it does that is because this just is not, this should be knurled or, or, or it should have something on it that makes it so it doesn't move. Um, I'd also like to see this made out of like aluminum or something like that, but that's, um, that would greatly increase the cost of the machine. Um, so I, I love this thing. Uh, like I said, I'm still learning how to use it. Um, I'm making right now the first, the first thing I will have made with this, not exclusively made with just this machine, but I'm, I'm making a, a waxed canvas, uh, duffel bag and I'm using this machine to do that with. Um, so anything really heavy, and, and you can detune this thing to the point where it will actually sew regular cloth. Um, oh, that's, <laughs> uh, but it, what it's really made for is, is a like cotton, heavy cotton duck, this wax canvas, um, you know, sunbrella material, webbing, it's great for webbing. Um, it came with a um, binding uh, arm, which, was something that I really wanted. So the binding arm fits in here. You feed your binding material in and it'll fold it perfect. It'll fold it over and then you can use it to bind an edge with. I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm probably, I am going to do that. I've bound edges with this, but I didn't use the binding tool. Um, I just folded it over, clipped it and sewed around it. Um, so that worked it works great. So it, it, the other thing, and I mentioned, I, I mentioned this in my unboxing video, but it bears reiteration is Sailrite is a phenomenal company to deal with. If you have a problem with Sailrite, you are the problem, not Sailrite. Um, I got a real beef with internet assholes and some of the things that I heard from, I read on some of the internet page or some of the forums and things about Sailrite and this machine were just completely unfounded bullshit. Um, yeah, that's, that's, ju that's just the way it is. The same with the, the, the Burnett. I, I read, I don't take a shit without researching it. I researched all three of these machines and everything that I researched on them, I always found somebody that pissed and moaned and bitched about it. And you know what? Yeah. I learned part of the reason I don't do auto body repair anymore is because I got sick and tired of fucking experts, internet experts telling me I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I, in this particular case, I don't know what I'm doing, but damn it, I've had nothing but phenomenal service from sale, right? Doesn't matter what I order. I ordered this machine on a Tuesday morning. I had this machine at my house unpacked and sewing by Friday. Um, so it was like, bang, right? It, they were right on top of it. Now, just real quick, I, I, I shouldn't mention this, but I, I need to mention it. This machine was $1,500, but it was ready to go. Like I took it out of the box, 1500 bucks, ready to sew out the door. Um, I was like 14, 
95, whatever. It was 15, it was $1,560 to have this delivered to my house. Um, with a couple, I bought like two or three little things extra to go above and beyond with this machine. The Burnett was $2,000 for the machine. Um, I, the, yeah, the, the Burnett was $2,000. The problem with the Burnett was I had to also purchase software to make the embroidery other than the embroidery stuff that's in the machine here. I'm not going to go through the menu, but there's built in embroidery designs. Um, without the software to make your own embroidery designs, um, it, it, it's, it, you can't use it. it. You need to have that software. You can do some stuff with lettering and things, um, but it's much easier to do it on a computer. That software cost me $500 because I purchased the Burnett, uh, I'm sorry, the Bernina um, software to go with this machine. I bought the Bernina software because experience has taught me if you use Bernina software with the Bernina machine, because this is a Bernina, it's, it's like the Hyundai of the, or the, the Kia of the Bernina line, or Burnett, yeah, Bernina line. <laughs> <clears throat> um, it, it should work. And if you have a problem with it and you go and you contact the manufacturer and say, well, this isn't working right. And then they say, well, you're using the wrong software. No, 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 no. I bought the right software. I bought your software. Why won't it work? But I haven't had have been any, I, I really honestly haven't had any real problems with it that weren't caused by, once again, user error and not knowing how to use it or work with it. Um, and then the, <clears throat> the serger, uh, I mentioned I paid $250 for the serger. Um, so I've got a lot of money tied up in my sewing projects. Um, it, it, I never, <clears throat> I never intended to make any money with this. Uh, this was purely, um, something that I wanted to, to learn how to do. Uh, you don't need any of this stuff. I mean, you, you, it, you don't need any of this stuff. You could buy this machine and sew for the rest of your life it'd be just fine. You don't need the sale right. I bought the sale right because of the things that I want to make. And so I'm not overtaxing this machine. Um, oh, another thing with the sale right, which I should mention is the sale right takes different needles than this machine. The sale right takes a round shaft needle. This takes a standard sewing needle. Um, the uh, which is the same needle that the serger takes. So I have two machines that take the regular normal sewing or normal um, normal needles, and then the the uh, the uh, the sale right takes a proprietary round needle. So that's a little weird. I got to keep an eye on that. Um, but ironically, I had ordered the wrong needles, so I have needles for. I had I I bought the wrong needles for this machine from Sailrite and I have extra Sailrite needles or the, the round shaft needles. Um, so that's about it. Uh, I, like I said, you know, this is a test of the iPhone camera and um, just wanted to show off my show, sewing machines. Uh, I need to put up a little bit more content and I think this is a good way to get started with that.